Hello guys, Zeno here and welcome to another Witcher free build video. This build is following the Heart of Stone expansion and will make use of some of the new items such as the Viper armor and weapon set along with the new enchanting features. The main focus of this build will revolve around melee damage bombs, potions, poison resistance and damage over time with little emphasis on science, unlike our last build which was heavily science focused. If you haven't seen that video and prefer a mage style gameplay, feel free to go and check out that video. Right, let's jump into the abilities we're taking for this build. I won't prioritise them in order of which to pick these up, but you'll want to end up with these by the end and you'll also want to be of a high enough level to unlock them all. We'll start off in the alchemy tree and we're going to want to pick up poison blades and fixative which will allow us to apply poison damage over time on our melee attacks whilst allowing for our oils to remain permanently. Next we want to max out side effects so that every time we use a potion we will also use another randomly selected potion without any additional cost to toxicity. We've then got 3 points in frenzy which is a really fun passive ability that will slow down time whenever an enemy is about to counter us which makes it for some very matrix-esque melee jewels and makes it very difficult for the enemy to hit you provided you're making use of your potions to remain over the toxicity level. Next I've got Killing Spree and Synergy just for some further passive buffs to defensive and offensive capability. But the next two abilities is where the real fun begins and they revolve around the bombs. First pick up and max out the efficiency ability which will allow you to carry up to a maximum of 10 bombs if combined with superior recipes and a cockatrice decoction potion. Then grab and max out cluster bombs which will allow your bombs to detonate into fragments causing a huge airway of micro explosions which is amazing for spreading out your DOTs. For example, if I use a Devil's Puffball, it will cover the entire area in a cloud of poison, which if synergized with the Viper Armor set will allow you to stand in the middle of it immune to any poison damage. A Dragon's Dream Bomb will allow you to set up multiple gas clouds ready to be ignited by an Igni Blast, erupting a series of explosions that look like something out of a Michael Bay movie. It also works great with crowd control effects such as freezing and blinding, giving you an endless amount of time in combat to pick and choose your target and approach. Next we're going for two melee focused abilities in muscle memory and precise blows. Now it's up to you if you want to go for quick or heavy attacks here but I personally preference quick attacks for faster poison stacking. And finally your last two slots will be for your signs. Now I suggest picking up first two abilities for Axie and Igni and rotating them. I usually use Axie for humanoids and beasts or multiple monsters and I switch to Igni for larger monsters and boss encounters. Next let's look at the potions you want to use. For the first potion I use Pitry's Filter for guaranteeing the effect of my signs which need the support due to the lack of ability investment for them. But other potions that synergize greatly with this build are anything that increases vitality for reasons I'll explain with our next potion. And that potion is Swallow. Now this potion is absolutely essential to the build as it's the key to the defensive synergy we obtain from our enchants. Swallow will trigger rapid vitality regeneration whilst in combat and if you play the build correctly there should be long periods where you are running around with this effect at full HP. This is where the enchants come in. On both my steel and silver swords I'm running with the invigoration enchant which will increase the damage output significantly provided we are at full health with regen active. This combination means when utilizing the build correctly we are putting out an amazing amount of damage, DOT pressure or whilst continuously regenerating health and having a near endless supply of utility at our disposal with the bombs. For the gear, as I already mentioned, we are running with the Viper set and the enchant depends on what sign you're running with. So whilst using Axie, I've got the Possession enchant and I rotate this enchant to support Igni when necessary. For oils on the Silver Sword, it obviously depends what enemy you're facing, but for the Steel Sword, we always want to be running with Superior Hangman's Venom. For weapons, it's up to you. I like to use the Viper Swords. Uh, until you get the Viper Swords, you maybe want to use weapons that put lots of damage over time effect onto the target. Later on I managed to pick up the Caretaker Spade which I absolutely fell in love with not only for the great life regeneration which synergizes perfectly with the build but also because it's a clear reference to Bloodborne. 
and it also has an amazing green spell effect when wielded. This was my favourite until I completed Heart of Stone expansion and managed to pick up Iris. And my god talk about OP against non-monster types. Two quick attacks followed by a heavy is guaranteed knockdown which also acts as a cleave so it can hit multiple targets. I just wish I had more of an incentive to use this weapon now that I've completed everything. But anyway that's the build guys. If you liked the video please give it a like and consider subscribing for more Witcher 3 content coming soon. Okay guys until next time take care.